Hi, this is author philosopher Ronald E. Springer from ethicsunderground.com with a continuation of Chapter 4, Part 15, believe it or not. We're finally on Part 3, The Meaning of Life, Concepts of Purpose. Starts with a quote, You won't be any good at all unless you love it. The Perfect Storm. Peace, the first necessity. Why is it that we no longer hear of men and women like William Wallace and Joan of Arc? They were fighters for freedom against any kind of oppression. They knew what they wanted. It was simple enough to end the use of force against them, to gain the freedom to earn their living, and to keep the results of their work. They longed for a society where they need not face constant perils, an environment where today's achievement could be furthered tomorrow without fear of it being demolished, confiscated, or stolen. They wanted a world where their children would be spared the unnecessary hazards of predaceous savages. They fought alongside those they inspired, fully willing to die for their dream, and became legends of human greatness. Do such people still exist? Where are they now? Hint. They are in industry. They had won their freedom to act, and now they are acting. An industrial revolution is what happens when men are set free. It may have a name associated to a past event, but it is actually a human being's natural response to his surroundings when nothing stands in his way. Prosperity, honestly distributed, is what only freedom can regulate. Someone has to stand in every era, those who are part scientist and part adventurer, to speak and to lead. It doesn't matter whether the task is to lead men to fight or to lead them to produce. Such men can do both equally well when called upon. All such men prefer prosperity to violence, but choose the latter when they witness corruption gaining a foothold on our civilization. Men like William Wallace of Scotland, the strong, reluctant warrior, the man of unpeachable integrity and spirit, seeing nothing but his right to be, guarding nothing but the integrity of men, will pick up their weapons again when the law tells them that the government's monopoly on force allows the citizens no right to defend themselves against it. The warriors have not died off and will never die. Every successive generation asks, what are we here for? Moral warriors are the men who have answered that question. We absorb the same fables, stories, and legends, the great battles of good and evil, all sharing the same elements of innocence oppressed to be quelled by innocence grown strong. We address the same universal problems as time moves on, passing to future generations the peace of ours. But for the most part, modern warriors use words now. We are free in America. We can speak. Words are swords without the S. And they are powerful weapons. Every utterance of integrity is a blow to evil and a plus to the side of life. With our freedom of speech, the concentrations of evil have been disallowed a monopoly on man's conveyances to men, and an unprecedented era of productivity has been the result. Well, that's all for now. Next up, we'll delve into prosperity, the next step beyond peace. Click subscribe and leave a thumbs up if you'd like to help wipe out moral confusion fast with nature's moral armor and make the world a better place please visit our blog on ethicsunderground.com where you'll find products to help you reach the highest clarity possible, great personal power, and fulfillment in life. Get on our email list to get our mortgage mutilator for free. It shows you how to pay off a 30-year mortgage in about seven years. Being debt-free is essential to a strong you and a strong America. Thanks for watching. See you next time.